and welcome to another episode of Content Warfare TV. I got to tell you, I am very excited for today because what we are going to be talking about is on the top of my mind. Uh, for those who haven't heard, I've I've only been trying to been trying to stealthily drip it out, but it's probably more obvious than than I would uh, try to make it seem. But uh, I'm writing a book. It's called Content Warfare. It's going to obviously mirror this podcast and all the things that we talk about. And I have the guy who is holding my hand. I'm like a child in this world, and he is holding my hand through the process, and he is going to make this book successful. I have Guy Vincent from Publishizer.com. Guy, it's great to have you here, man. Happy to hold your hand, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Virtually, I guess. Don't Virtually. A pleasure. <laughs> um, so let everyone know, uh, first of all, let them know where you're coming from, because we we're, we got a big time difference here. Uh, tell them a little bit about Publishizer. Let, like, like get into this platform, because it's going to really be the crux of a, a lot of what we talk about today. All right, so we are disrupting publishing. Publishizer is a pre-orders platform for books, and what we're doing is we're helping uh, authors who want to publish their book in an epic manner to launch a, launch a pre-orders campaign. You can think of it as a crowdfunding platform for books, uh, but we're really trying to take print to the next level, artisanal publishing, ebook innovation, and just making some really beautiful art come to life in print. Yeah, so I really like the idea, and, and this is one of the things that enamored me to um, to you and to the Publishizer platform was this idea of kind of disrupting the process, right? Like, you know, when I came and I sat down with you, I think, you know, one of the big things that was on my mind was I wanted to write this book. Um, I didn't want to go traditional for my first book for a myriad of different reasons. I'm sure if someone dropped a couple hundred Gs on me, I would change my mind. But um, considering the, 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 the landscape at the time, I wanted to write my own thing. But I didn't want... I just pump out. So, what is it about the Publishizer platform that you know is allowing people to kind of take their self-publishing game to a whole nother level? Mm. So, look, I mean, self-publishing has been uh, growing really steadily in the last couple of years, and the name of the game has really been changing from, you know, just churning out books and whacking it on platforms to really building up an audience having a following and producing a premium, beautiful uh, book for, you, for your audience. So what we're doing with Publishizer is, you know, first of all, working with our authors very closely to launch a successful pre-orders campaign, as we're going to do for you, Ryan, and then following the process through, all the way through the editing phases, the design phases. Uh, printing is my, my bread and butter. I come from a book printing background in Singapore, where we're based right now. Um, but also, you know, then making sure the book has a fantastic launch on Amazon. So Amazon, as a lot of you guys would know, who are looking into publishing a book, they're really dominating the game right now. The problem is, you know, you're a first-time author, you write your book, you do a great job on it, you stick it on Amazon, and then what? You know, that's, that's the main problem. So what we're doing with our authors is harnessing the tribe, you know, building the bringing the early adopters together through the pre-orders campaign, building up that mailing list, and at the end of all that, when the book is ready, we do a blast on Amazon. Hey everyone, thanks for supporting the book. You've been amazing. You have early access. You might even have your name acknowledged in the book. Please post a review on Amazon and suddenly your book can start climbing the rankings. We had one of our authors just last week, he's, he's hit number six. Uh, on Amazon for consumer behavior, which is a pretty phenomenal accomplishment considering yeah. every single author above him comes from a, a big a big publishing house. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's exciting to see this this happening. Yeah, you, you know, this is this is what I um, I mean there's I, you're already becoming a soundbite machine for me, which is great. So you see me over here scribbling. But um, one of the things that you had mentioned was uh, and, and there's a lot that I want to dip back into, but was responsibility to the audience, right? So this is one of the things that that really pushed me over the edge to using you guys and, and going this crowdfunding way was that uh, we work so hard to build up an audience, right? The, 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 the title of the book includes the word that I'm writing, build an audience, uh, tell your story, battle for attention, right? So, um, so obviously I'm into these terms. To me, the idea of, you know, what is, all right, so this is where my question is going is what is it about creating that thing, that hardcover thing that people can hold in their hands, that is well done, that is tangible? Like, I feel like 
you build up this audience, you have a responsibility to give them something uh, that they can, you know, I'm part of this tribe. Like, are you seeing that with your other authors? Because to me, it was one of the big drivers of this decision was being able to give them something besides just these intangible shows and information products. Mm. Yeah, look, the book is is becoming an artifact. It's something which is being printed a lot less, but it's not going away. And, you know, I've definitely seen this in the printing industry. Print runs have gone from being these huge 100,000 million print run soft covers down to a single print run. You know, it could be anything from 10,000 to, to 1,000, but it's it's that hardcover limited edition book which which has got the, the patrons of the book as a part of the making of it. So something we've seen in Publishizer, which has been really interesting, is the notion of a, a patron edition for a book, which is where you pre-order the book at a higher price point. It might be $50 or $100, but you're, you're a patron of the book, and your name is then acknowledged. This is probably limited to like 50, 100 people or so, and it's just about that additional experience and that emotional investment in, in the book. People love to receive their book, open it up and see that you know they're acknowledged as someone who helped to make this happen. It's, it's a really beautiful thing, gives people a kick, and I think people really enjoy seeing a book from that raw process, going from like the idea to seeing the campaign, the updates, and then eventually that physical product in their hands. It's magic. What is it... So I, I hadn't... I was... Uh, the, the, the idea of the patron copy made complete sense to me. I hadn't heard of it before speaking to you. Obviously, as soon as you said it, I was like, oh, I think I've seen something like that, and uh, I know a couple authors uh, who I, books I've read have done that, but um, to me, it only makes sense, right? Like, as I've gotten into this, as I've gone into this process deeper and deeper, uh, the only thing that I've really been able to wrap my head around is that you absolutely, positively cannot do this by yourself. So, you know, what is it about showing people who are involved in the process, even if it's something small, like someone who, um, who like I, I, I created a content warfare book founders community, right, which is basically an email list and a Facebook group where they, there's tons of information about this book and how it's created that's being shared in that community that no one else even knows is being shared. And yeah. those people, every single one of them, uh, will get special mention in the book, even if they don't buy the book, because in some way they've participated in the process. And to me, it seems like, like, where did this idea come from? Because it only makes sense to me. Like, like we could do this in, in other parts of our life as well. Like, what is it about that that, that that really drives people to be part of these projects? Yeah, look, it's it's been there from the very beginning. Uh, even our first ever um, campaign that we had on Publishizer was for a book called The Backpacker Chef by a lady named Jackie Trigus in Australia. It's a cookbook for travelers. Um, and she wanted to involve her readers in, in the campaign by acknowledging them. It, it was her idea. And it's like, mm, sure, we can do that. You know, we just need to have a page in the final print files. And it sold out. So we're like, oh, that, that did pretty well. You know, 50, 50, 50 uh, patrons times $50, that's $2,500. That's, that's quite nice. Um, we You're probably thinking she should have charged more for it. Yeah, well, <laughs> people have started doing that. <laughs> we limit that. You know, it is, it's an exclusive reward. But we had a children's book called The Other Side, a story about a children who loses his imagination. And um, the author did the same thing. Um, 50 patron names uh, for $50 sold out again. You know, we're like, wow, this is really interesting. And, you know, most of our authors have been offering this. They've almost always sold out. Um, and for our latest campaign, which is a book called The Lean Brand by uh, Jeremiah Gardner and Brant Cooper, who's one of the, you know, he's a two times best selling author. Um, yeah, they had literally $500 sold within the first five minutes of their campaign as a result of these patron editions. Uh, they sold 3000 in their first day. And um, yeah, they're well on their way to a very successful campaign as a result of allowing these patrons to be a part of the making of the book. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. I think there's, there's a whole like larger concept here that I think a lot of people miss. And uh, actually, it, it's just coincidence, there was an article published by Unbounce Today, and uh, Tia Kelly did a really good job 
And one of the questions that she had asked me, I, I was I was featured in it, and uh, nice little humble brag by me there. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I, uh, but one of the things that she asked me was, she saw that I spend an extraordinary amount of time retweeting, resharing people who have come on the show. So mm -hmm. there is, if you look at my stream, you'll see an exponential amount of content that's been reshared as people who've actually been on the show. And she said, "Do you, is that part of the the?" contract that you have with people when they come on and I said no I said if people are gonna help me build this platform and share their expertise with me then I'm gonna help them build theirs and mm -hmm. the patron edition and letting people who've in some way contributed to uh, helping this product put together it, it only makes complete sense to me so I, I think that you know that's kind of a genius idea um, I want to I want to step back from the platform itself for a second and I want to ask you, this is very general, but why self-publish? Like, like why are we, why should I take on a larger body work? I'm a blogger, I'm a business owner, I'm a consultant, and I have all these ideas in my head. Like, like is the long form, larger body of work book, like, is it worthwhile? Like, am I going to get done with content warfare and be like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. Like, what is it about <laughs> this project that still draws people in? Yeah, look, I mean, I think people are always going to write books. It's about, you know, sharing what's most meaningful to you, telling stories, sharing insights. But in terms of self-publishing, I mean, we look at one of our authors, um, Scott Bales, who uh, has written a book called Mobile Ready. He had publishers offering him, him deals, you know. He, he'd written the first version of his manuscript, spoken to a couple of publishers, big, big publishers who'd offered him contracts, publishing deals, but they just didn't appeal to him. Um, you know, for starters, the royalties were super low. You know, you're lucky if you get 10 to 15% off the cover price in a traditional publishing deal. But also, he didn't have any creative control over the book. And you also, uh, to some extent, you give up your rights. So if you want to do something with your book in future, whether it be courses or videos or movies or workshops, whatever it may be, extension or products, you're limited. And for him as an entrepreneurial person in general, that just didn't quite resonate well with him, but he didn't want to do it alone. You know, who would want to write a book alone? As you say, no one can really do it on their own. Publishing is a, it's a team sport. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, what we did when I met up with him was like, well, you know, you need an editor, so we'll find you an editor. You need a designer, we can do that. Someone to help with the marketing. And we pulled together this team for him, which was made up of an awesome guy called Matt Gartland, runs a company called Winning Edits in the US, one of the best nonfiction business book editors, designer in Singapore, business, uh, a New York business book publicist um, who was really pro at his game, and he ran a massively successful campaign. He did 28,000 uh, US in pre-orders in his 30-day campaign. Uh, his book went on to be, you know, it still is climbing the ranks of Amazon. He was at number six last week. Um, and in the world for consumer behavior, which we think is a phenomenal accomplishment. He's the number one self-publishing author in Amazon in that category. And yeah, for him, it's been an immensely valuable experience. Yeah, that, uh, I mean, I, I have mirrored a lot of the things that I have done in my campaign. I don't want to say mirrored, but I've definitely used some of the things that he's done as a reference point because uh, mm -hmm. I, I like the way that he that he's kind of positioned his his uh, his book and uh, positioned his message. Um, one of the big things in, in that we were originally talking about and that I'm starting to work on right now is the idea of a book trailer and not necessarily the, the video and the technical aspects of it, but mm -hmm. it's like, what is it about the story behind why you're writing it that gets people to the book? Because I, I feel like when I look at books that, that I really want to read, um, there's like a whole... There's like a story before you actually read the story that gets you to mm. the book. And uh, the books that I don't want to read, it's kind of just like, I wrote a book here, you should read it. And, you know, those don't seem to have legs. You know, like, um, you know, you use like the, like Simon Sinek start with why, right? Like the content is amazing. But when you hear his, the story that got him to that book, you're like, oh my God, like I have to read this book like five times. Bye. So <laughs> right? You know, you have to buy it. I have to have it. So, you know, what is it yeah. about that pre-story that gets people in? And what should they think about it? You know, well, how do you think about creating that? Yeah, look, a video, uh, a book trailer serves one purpose, essentially, and it's about um, trust. 
you know, as a as an unknown author to someone, you have zero trust with them. You know, to to a lot of the audience here, I will have zero trust with them. Um, it's really only by you know, sharing your story with them, um, and video is one of the best ways to do that. That they you know realize, hey, this this guy has been through this. He wants to share this. He's going to use a book to communicate that. I want to be a part of that, or or you don't. You know, but either way, the book trailer is the most powerful tool um, that I know of to establish trust. That's that's really interesting. So, uh, you know, I hadn't thought about it in that regard. I mean, that's. That makes a lot of sense to me. So basically, you know, when, I, when I'm watching Scott Bales, so, so take Scott Bales from Mobile Ready. Uh, you know, I was watching his video last night as I was writing some of the script for my own trailer, and I was thinking about the way that it was set up and how he was positioning it. And his is very short. Like this doesn't have to be a five-minute long thing. Uh, mm-hmm. His is maybe just over a minute long. But what it does is it immediately connects you to to him the problem that he's trying to solve and why he feels it needs to be solved and that this book does that. Uh, mm-hmm. Another good one, I don't know if you remember, uh, Pat Flynn did one mm-hmm. for uh, his uh, book that came out on a weird platform that I don't actually remember the name of now. But um, uh, he did like this whole thing, very well done. Uh, uh, he was on a train and he's talking about how he used to take that train every day back and forth to work and that's the reason that he's making all that money now selling affiliate links and shit. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it, it does. It immediately makes you think, okay, this guy or, or girl uh, understands the topic and is part of the tribe. Um, are there yeah, other definitely. pieces besides, say, a video trailer that do that? Yeah, look, um, you know, people are using all kinds of uh, content to, to communicate their message. Um, I mean, I, I think of... Uh, one of our authors, his name's Richard Webb, he's doing a campaign at the moment for a book called 8020 Japanese. Uh, it's about focusing on the 20% of Japanese that gives you 80% of the results. So it's not this crazy difficult language that everyone thinks it is. You just need to approach it in a smart way. So, you know, you come to his campaign page, you see a beautiful cover design, that's already great. You see the video, you click it, and it's as simple as, hi, I'm Richard Webb. And then he goes into his story in Japanese with subtitles, and suddenly you trust him. So you're like, oh, wow, this guy yeah, clearly speaks Japanese. Scroll down. There's his backstory. There's an image of him in Japan, pictures of him dressed up as 10-pin bowling costumes and appearing on Japanese TV. All these things just establish trust. Um, I mean, things which authors are using are slide decks. Mm-hmm. Slide decks are a really great way to communicate um, ideas visually. People can just scroll through them, and if they like it, they keep going. If they don't, they keep scrolling down. Um, definitely, you want to share some overview, some backstory of the book. Uh, a table of contents is always a great idea. This is what you're going to get. This is like the menu for this book. We want to whet your appetite, and then you have the sample chapter which is the tantalizing bit that makes you go, I want this book. I think it's going to be great. I want to see it published. I want to be an early adopter. I'm going to pre-order it. Yeah. The, it's funny. When you putting this project together, it's so much bigger than I thought it would be, right? Like you think in your mind, geez, I, I write tons of blogs. I mean, I write thousands and thousands of words every single week, sometimes every single day. You know, writing a book shouldn't be that hard. And then you start to weave together uh, this story and narrative. And it becomes like you almost, like there have been days when I'm like sitting at my computer and like the overwhelm of fitting everything together is like keeping your fingers from moving. It's almost like you have weights on your fingers. Um, And what I found is that by... um, the, by, by chopping it up into little pieces, I found the project to be much more easy to do. And um, one of the ways that I've done that is by showing my work, right? Like the Austin Cleon show your work kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. you know, what are some ways that you've seen authors uh, show their work? So like I will write for a while and then I'll pull off like one of my favorite quotes that I wrote or a quote that I've added to the, that I added to the book or, or a favorite stat. And I like uh, put it out on Instagram, and I'll shoot it out to Instagram, and I'll be like, "Here's my favorite quote from, or, or my favorite stat that I introduced into the book." What are some other ways that you've seen authors kind of show their work and and kind of get people involved in the book, the actual writing of the book? 
Yeah, look, um, I mean, I think one of the one of the masters of this is is Jeremiah Gardner, who's doing the lean brand. I've seen him in the the build up to his campaign, and he's just been so good at like just giving and giving and giving and sharing all the way. Um, something which I thought was really great was uh, the lean brand in 999 words. So this was like a free resource which he gave out weeks in advance of the campaign. And it's the entire philosophy of the lean brand. You know, branding is not about a logo or about pictures. It's about the connection that you have with, with your audience. It's about establishing that trust. And um, he can manage to communicate that in this short, easy to digest document. He had some really cute Ill illustrations from Fake Grimlock, who's the most famous dinosaur robot on the internet, doing some great sketches for him. And pe the response to that was great. Um, you know, he's been measuring all of the click-throughs through his email marketing. He'd send out a, a slide deck, you know, with information about the lean brand. He'd measure the response to that. He'd do tweets with quotes from the book, measure the response to that, send out the table of contents in advance, measure the response to that. So there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, anything that you can measure is, is valuable. Yeah. yeah. I know that's one of the things... Um about, well, Instagram, it can be tough, but uh, I definitely, I, I have been using, uh, I use Google uh, shortened links. I don't use Bitly. I just, mm -hmm. I don't know, for some reason, that's just my process. But um, I definitely, you can see, you know, people signing up for that founder, because right now I'm sending them to the founders community, uh, which mm -hmm. is really kind of my, um, here are the people who have said that they're interested. And, you know, the response to the behind the curtain has been amazing. People are like, oh my God, that quote is so great. And they have no context in, in it, you know, of, of the where the quote is wrapped in. They're like, oh, it really hits. And you know, and then I you start to look at it and you're like, wow, I've seen other authors do that and it and it completely makes sense because you feel like you're in the person's brain and sharing what they do and that you you're even though you're just reading this thing, you're contributing in some way. So it really builds like that experience around the book, which um mm. Is kind of is kind of where I wanted to go. My next question was, you know, you Gary V does this amazingly, right? He he gets like this, like you 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 get you feel like you're like part of what's like of something, right? With crush it, like you read crush it, and you're like, oh, like I want to crush it, right? Like I just I am part of this, like I just want to do something. Um, how how can authors kind of get that experience going before? Uh, they actually hit launch, or before they've written the book. Like for me, mine's about seventy percent done right now. So I'm doing a crowdfunding campaign. The book's not done. So how can you start to do that? Like get that experience going. Are there um, maybe not even tactics? Maybe just some kind of higher end ideas that things that mm. you can be sharing into your work. Mm. Look, Ryan, I think you're a pretty good example of this. To to be honest, you know, I've seen the way that you've been involving people. Um, now he's sweet talking me because I'm a client. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, look, we use a bunch of tools, as you're familiar. Um, you know, we love Hackpad. We think it's a great collaborative document yes. tool. People you know, put their proposal up on Hackpad. They invite some of their closest friends into it. You can comment on any paragraph and, you know, measure, just see what people have to say about it. You know, that in itself is exciting for those people. You've been getting multiple sketches from, from your designer. Um, for your cover, involving people in that process, for them it's like the behind the scenes, it's, it's how the sausage gets made. Your early adopters and your evangelists want that stuff. They want to see how you work, how you operate, um, you know, what's going on in your day-to-day -day life in the lead up to this, to this experience which is coming for them. So I think by sharing as much of the production process with your readers as possible, they'll appreciate it. There's a good chance that they got a book in them as well, waiting to come out, and they're seeing what you're doing. And if it's successful, you know they'll they'll follow you as well. Yeah, I, I will say that talking tactically, uh, Hackpad as a tool, which was something I was not aware of until we started working together, has been an incredible has been an incredible resource uh, as far as mm -hmm. collaborative writing, uh, being able to have uh, like if I write something and I you know I can send guy an email and say. Hey guy, just put this little thing together. Like, hey, do you mind just popping in real quick and seeing how that fits? He can pop in, write me a little note, pop out, and then next time I can go in, I can be like, all right, I need to maybe reformat these images or uh, you know maybe move this here or there. And it, it as far as a, a 
bit free, which is amazing, a uh, piece of collaborative software, um, you know, it is, it, it's really, really high quality. So if, even if you're not writing a book, um, I would definitely tell everyone to check out Hackpad, and it's just www.hackpad.com, just like it sounds, and I put the link uh, in the event page if you want to check it out later. Um, mm. So, you know, def so I basically have used Hackpad to bring in, uh, so Craig McBreen of McBreen Design, he's got uh, a fantastic blog, and he's got a really great podcast that's going to be coming out soon called The Art of Breaking Out. He's writing the, uh, the, the foreword to the book. Uh, I have yes. Mars Dorian, who uh, many of you are probably aware of. He's a former guest on the show. Absolutely cool dude. His, awesome. his, his brand and images and illustrations are like completely recognizable. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I'm working with you. I have uh, Tom Morcus has been an amazing resource, two-time guest on the show, and just someone who I, I love bouncing ideas off of. Uh, I can say that surrounding myself with a team of people who kind of share the vision um, has been is, is really the only way this book is going is going to end up being successful. And I have every I have every um, belief that it's going to be, but it's because of the people that you surround yourself. So how does uh, uh, an author who's considering self-publishing, so they're going to have to build them teams, a team themselves, how do they go about figuring out who they should work with? Because too many voices and you get overwhelmed. Too few voices and maybe you're too narrow focused. Um, yeah. Someone who has a different belief in, the, in where it should go and now you're kind of feeling uncomfortable and inauthentic. So what advice can you give to people on how to build that team around your book? Hmm. Well, there's two ways. Um, the first way is to look for work that you love. You know, find books that you've really enjoyed reading. Do a bit of research. See if you can find out who was the editor of that book. There are, you, you can often find out this information if you look in, you know, some of the earlier pages of a book. Um, if you really like a designer's work, try to find, just reach out to them. Be like, hey, I really love your work. I think it's gangster. Do you yeah. want to be the illustrator for my book? All you need to start is a front cover. You know, you're not yeah. asking them to take on a huge job. You're asking them to produce, you know, something fun and interesting. And, you know, there's potential for a, the full job after that. You know, doing the full jacket design, doing the interior layout. You know, there's a lot for them uh, to benefit from by being a part of the campaign. Same with an editor. You can say, look, I really love the books that you've worked on. I want to do a pre-orders campaign. Here's my proposal. What do you think? If you're interested, I'd love to hire you to do this full job, you know, if it works. So it's a way of giving these, making these guys a part of the campaign um, as well. So that's option one. <laughs> option two is just to contact us. I mean, we, we are building up a... a Shameless. Pretty... I love it. <laughs> um, we work with amazing people all around the world, you know, designers and editors and marketers from the US, from Australia, from Singapore, from the UK... From, from Hong Kong, there are some in Bali, there are people just floating around the world um, who are professionals, you know, they're top of the game, uh, they've probably left a job because they can do better by freelancing, and um, yeah, I do honestly feel that we're, we're bringing these people together into a form of an ecosystem or community. And yeah, we can and, just and, say, and this is another thing I would give too, and is that work with people with energy, right? Like, it, it's obvious from the way that you talk about your business that you have a lot of energy. I obviously have a lot of energy. The guys that I mentioned have a lot of energy. And this thing, this book writing thing for people who haven't done it yet is intense. It's Like I said before, it is more work than I thought it was ever going to be. I feel more pride for the project and feel, you know, I, I feel a lot of, um, it brings me a lot of joy that it's coming together and, you know, you're prideful of what you're doing because, you're putting all this hard work in, but it is a buttload of work. Um, so you sure. need to be surrounded with people like poor Mars. I just keep going back <laughs> to him. Like I want another sketch. I want another sketch, and he probably hates me. But um, but he keeps coming back with them, right? And they oh. and they and they hit and um, you know, and I and I thought I had the cover done, and I went back to him and asked for three more. <laughs> and I not that I would recommend doing that to your illustrator or your, or your cover designer, but um, but. You know, he keeps bringing it, right? Like, so the new sketches I got were just as high quality, just as much energy in them as the ones that he gave me on the first run. And yeah. if you have someone who's not really engaged, you're just not going to get that. It's going to bring you down. So that is definitely something from my own experience um, that I would add. Uh, 
let's talk about, so we talked a little bit about uh, self-publishing in general. We've talked about the platform, but we haven't gotten into why does someone choose crowdfunding? Right, so we've talked about why someone chooses self-publishing. We've talked about what this platform can do for people, and and this just is, speaks to the nature of how poor an interviewer I am. I've actually left the most important question for the end of the show. But why does someone choose crowdfunding uh, as a mm. as a means to get this done? Like, what is it from the authors you've worked with, from your own experience? Why crowdfunding? Why not just like mortgage the house and take that you know, <laughs> ten grand and put it into the book? Yeah, so it's a classic problem, right? Like uh, a lot of people have the friend who has gone ahead and self-published a book. You go to their house and their, their home is full of, of their own books and, and boxes. Uh, I mean, look, it's, it's a real problem. I, I've seen it myself with yep. close friends who are phenomenally talented and they've produced a beautiful book. Um, yeah, I have a friend in Singapore, she wrote a book um, and you go to her home and it's, it's a sea of pink. All you can see in her home is copies of her book. She did like a 3,000 print run. You know, I think she sold about 1,000. Um, but like, you know, that's still 2,000 books left over, which is a lot. Yeah. So our approach um, with crowdfunding is get those pre-orders up front. Like, um, you know, make sure you have enough money to cover all of your production costs. Editing, design, printing, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, the print runs aren't as bad as they used to be. Uh, the minimum print run used to be like 10,000. Uh, it's just out of reach for a lot of self-publishing authors, but in recent years, that, that's just been coming down and down and down and down, and now the minimum print run is closer to 1,000. Some, some even do less than that, yeah. which suddenly is within the realm of, of, the, self, of the crowdfunding um, range. Anything from five to 10,000 is very capable for a lot of self-publishing authors these days. Yeah. There's there's two things that, so I, when you tell people that you're crowdfunding something, they immediately kind of look at you like you're going for a money grab, right? Like, <laughs> oh, why is he crowdfunding? If he was really successful, he would just, he would just do it himself. He wouldn't need to crowdfund. And um, so I have two pushbacks to that that I want to share, and I want you to give me your opinion on them and, and if they're even valid. Um, mm -hmm. The first one is, Crowdfunding is really just activating your audience, right? So I could, you know, I have enough money right now that I could take out of my savings and pay the expenses to, to do everything that we're going to be doing through the crowdfunding campaign. It's not like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not, I'm not rich, but I have the money to be able to do that. Um, mm -hmm. The reason I chose crowdfunding is because I want, I want my audience to be as much a part, I, you know, I, I say this all the time about this show. This show is about all the people watching right now, all the people who are watching in the future, and the people who listen on the podcast. It's their show as much as it's mine. So the mm -hmm. book is the same philosophy. By, in my opinion, what I've, what, what I've really come around with with crowdfunding is that, is that this makes the book theirs. Maybe they're only giving you 25 bucks. Maybe they're giving you 1,500 bucks because they want you to come speak and, and they want 25 cop. You know, that's one of the rewards. Um, maybe they want more, but in some way they're saying, I own this book as much as you do. Not That's figuratively, not literally. But, um, but, but, but I, there's something there to the activation of the audience that it, it – dude, if the thing doesn't fund, you don't have a good concept or you don't have the audience you thought and you know, right? It's disappointing. It would break my heart. But um, you then know the idea isn't there, you can't sell the idea, or you don't have the audience. And now you know, before you got into this whole big thing, that, that it's not there. And maybe you need to spend some more time building up your audience or your idea. The other thing is uh, for people who maybe can't necessarily just drop the money to, to get to where you need to be, it does allow you to, in my opinion, do it right. Right, you're not nickel and diming for a two hundred dollar editor on Elance, or <laughs> saying I'm gonna take twelve hundred bucks and I'm gonna give it to someone who really knows what they're doing, and they're going to allow me to put my best foot forward. Which I believe, and, and I'm up on my soapbox here. I'm not even interviewing you anymore. But um, you know, I, I personally believe that we as content creators, as as business owners, as as people who are who are building a brand in any capacity. When we decide to go down this path, we owe it. We have a responsibility to our audience to provide them with something quality that they can hold in their hand and say, I'm part of 
content warfare nation. I, I believe in what goes on here. I listen to the show and look at this thing. It's awesome. Right? If it's like this piece of crap little thing that looks that looks dumpy that you can tell I spent one hundred fifty dollars on, like how much pride do you have in that? And um, not that everyone who self publishes that's the way it is. I, I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying I have seen things done, and you get them in your hand, and you're like, Ugh. Mm -hmm. content could be great, but it doesn't show me that you just freaking love your audience so much you're willing to go all the way. So I don't know. Is there any validation there? I mean. Um, you can't say no because, like I said, I, 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 we work together. But um. <laughs> Yeah, look, I think for the first question um, about activating the audience, and I think you said it, it's not really about you. It's not really about the author. It's about the readers. Yeah. So the thing about crowdfunding is it's, it's really a question of how do I deliver as much value to my readers as possible? How do I offer them a unique experience, something that's rewarding and motivating and meaningful to them? So by participating in the pre-orders campaign, you know, the author is allowed the opportunity to reach out and deliver above and beyond what you would normally get by buying a book off Amazon or buying a book off a bookshelf. It's yeah. really like, you know, it might be ha having a chat with you on a Skype, you know, for whatever price. It might yeah. be about having you come down and talk to a company in yeah. return for buying a bunch of books. We've had everything from, uh, you know, getting your, <laughs> getting your, yourself written into a story of a book for a, of a novel for a certain price point to, you know, That's like $5,000, I'll come down, I'll do an on-site keynote for your company, and you get 200 copies of the book. Yeah. You know, we've seen all of this stuff done and a ton of interesting things in between from wine tastings for a book about wine tasting to growth hacking consulting for a book about growth hacking. Um, anything that you want to do, you can put in there. And that, that's what's really cool about it. Um, yeah. Second question, which was about you know wanting to deliver the best and doing creating a really beautiful book, that the thing is you can now do that with self publishing. Um, if you give up everything to a publisher, I mean look, they're a business, they have overheads, they have wages to pay. So as a result, you know they're often forced um, into producing a, a cheaper version of the book. Um, you know, everyone's seen the paperbacks that you know are a little bit floppy and it does the job, but you know it's not doesn't have that factor. Yeah. And you've probably seen the authors who've, um, you know, they've, they've gone the create space route on Amazon, uh, print on demand, soft cover. I mean, look, you get a physical object, but um, I mean, from a, from a book printing background, it's kind of like, it's, it's a lower quality version of the book. Um, you know, when you take the time and the effort to make your book the best that it can be, and as you know, with the amount of time that you put into your book, you want the object to be as have as much love infused with it as you can, and that's where we can bring in the hardcover, the dust jacket, the spot UV, the Swedish monk in paper that's Forest Stewardship Council certified, the thread sewn stitching, all the stuff that makes a really beautiful book feel good in the hands. That's what we're about. That's publishing 3.0. That's artisanal publishing, and our authors want that. Yeah, I see. I think that you just said it. Like. Um, because I have nothing against. I've actually published on Amazon and have sold a book for, I think I sold about 1,700 copies. It's called The Social Tools Book. It was an ebook. It was $2.99. And I sold about 1,700 copies of it. And for a while, it was in the teens of some category. I can't even remember. This was about three years ago. Um, and, and the content was great. But, uh, and, and you know, and I could have turned it into a soft cover. And, I don't want to, I'm not trying to knock doing that, right? Because I don't have a problem with that. And I know people on Google Plus that I adore that have done that, and their product is, is great, right? So it's not, it's, it's not a knock on that path. It is a thing, you, it, and, and this is where I get back to what you just said. If you're looking to create a piece of art, right, that's what the hardcover is to me. The ebook is the content. You want the content, you want to, to take it in and use it to grow your business and, and the that's the ebook is there for you. Um, you know, a, a paperback version at some point will be there for you, and that's really what I think paperbacks are for. I'm gonna open up this paperback, and I'm gonna learn this thing and get better at whatever the book is about. The mm. hardcover to me is like all that is awesome, but here is like a little piece of art, and you know, I I, I constantly get hung up on. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the 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 I. Uh, iPhone commercial, no, it's an iPad commercial by Apple. Um, 
uh, and uh, geez, I'm forgetting his name now. Um, Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, Mrs. Doubtfire. What, no, what's what's the guy that played uh, the uh, the comedian? Um, he's Robin got, Williams. Ryan Williams. Oh, geez, I can't believe I forgot his name. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, Robin Williams is doing a voiceover from uh, Dead Poet Society, where it's like the your mm-hmm. verse thing. Like everyone, you know, mm-hmm. you, you all you can really do is contribute a verse. What will your verse be? And for mm-hmm. me, the book is great, but that hardcover piece of art is like, here's my verse, right? Like I'm submitting this to the universe, um, and the universe will decide if it's worth inclusion. Um, mm. And uh, I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. I wish I had a better way to say it because uh, I've had people say to me like, "Geez, you know, doing a hardcover is kind of like masturbating, right? Like, I mean, what are you, you know, why are you doing that?" And you know, I mean, that's the reason. Um, so I don't know. That's kind of a weird way to kind of put a cap on our conversation. Um, no, guys, look, well, I think that. Um, I mean, sorry to to cut you off there, but for me, I, I think one of the most satisfying parts of my job, you know, like helping these authors get there, is almost every time after the author has their book in their hand, that becomes their Facebook profile picture. And it's just like them with their book in their hand. They're so proud. They've made it happen. It's that moment. And I've seen it when they open up the books and they see their book for the first time. It's in their hand. It's really beautiful. We created a video... Um, recently, it's on the about page, which just shows the the printing mechanics, the machines, the industry, and then at the end, the author, you know, it's the actual author has that book in his hands, and you see this little smile on his face. And yeah. not not knocking the ebooks, you know, I, I worked in ebook production for years, and ebooks can be a work of art as well. Yep. Um, but yeah, look, it's up to the author. Yes. Yeah, I guess that's what it comes down to. Is what are you trying to do? What's going to make you feel good about the project, right? I mean, like we've said this a bunch of times. It's a ton of work, and you got to feel good about the project. And for me, I've done ebooks. Ebooks are great. I have the book is going to be an ebook, right? Like so, there will be a version of this that is an ebook. But I, I just I can't get over having this thing. If no one buys it and no one reads it. I, you know, hey, that's the way the cookie crumbles. But I will say that I put everything I had into creating this thing that I can hold in my hand. And there's something to that. And I think there's something to that to your audience. So for those who are listening, you know, that uh, there is something to people holding something. I've sold insurance for seven years now, right? So up until, you know, up until a couple weeks ago, my I worked in an insurance agency. Um, and, you know, now I have my own digital marketing agency, Hanley Media Lab, and I can look back on that time and say one of the toughest parts about selling insurance is people don't have something tangible in their hands that they get. Mm. This allow you know, in the publishing world, the, the, there's something there. For the people who need that and want that, there's something there. Guy, this has been a fantastic conversation. A um, little self-promotional for both of us, but that's okay. <laughs> it's my show. We can do whatever the heck we want. Uh, I think we've given people a lot of really good uh, information. Um, uh, Sean just said that the hardcover book is the new business card for for entrepreneurs, and I would agree with that. I would Absolutely. agree. With that. Stanford it's the Smith, business card. right? Stanford Smith, um, who is a former guest of this show, has a really great uh, blog, Pushing Social. Did a book with Martin uh, Mark Schaefer, who's going to be a guest on in a couple weeks. And I asked him at Social Media Marketing World. I said, "Dude, what's it like being a published author now? Like, you know, how do you how do you feel about the whole thing?" And he goes, dude, it's the best business card I've ever, you know, it, you know, it took me a ton of work and I put it together, but it is the most profitable business card that I could have ever done. So, uh, Sean, we're right there with you. Guy, where where can people get more about you, about Publishizer? Uh, there's obviously going to be links for everyone listening. There's going to be links uh, in the show notes. You can get there, ryanhanley.com slash show81. So, Guy, tell them what they're going to get. Yeah, look, head on over to Publishizer. That's publish, I-Z-E-R.com. Apologies to any Germans in the audience. Um, but yeah, you, you can, if you want to contact me personally, uh, I, I love, I get a real kick out of working with people. Um, guy at Publishizer.com. I'd love to hear from you, see, you know, how we can help you, even if you just want to ask some questions. Totally cool. Um, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Guy, thanks for coming on. Anyone who's ever been interested in writing a book and you need help, like, this book has been probably two years in the making. And since I hooked up with Guy, I'm not just stroking his ego here, uh, since I had a chance to sit down with him and walk through the process, and, and, and like I said, really have him hold my hand through, here's 
here's what you need to do now, here's the things you need to think about, here's how we arrange these things. It took this loose form idea and about 45,000 words that were disconnected and we're like a couple months away from, from publishing a, a really, really nice book that I think is going to help a lot of people um, and something I'm really excited about. So I encourage you, if you're interested, uh, connect with him, pick his brain and see if his platform is something that uh, can help you. Um, Guy, thanks man, we're gonna get out. <laughs> Thank you Ryan.